Okay, in this video, I would like to discuss the schematic diagram for a pressure relief valve and how that relates to the real world and really where that schematic diagram comes from. Okay, so as you can see here, I have a cutaway diagram of a pressure relief valve and I'd like to walk you through each part and how that ends up relating to the schematic diagram. So the first thing we need to do when we're looking at the schematic diagram is understand how the body of the pressure relief valve is shown in the schematic diagram. Now this is one of the easiest parts because the schematic diagram for the body is just a square. Now this could represent just being a single position valve, meaning it's kind of opened or closed. But um, there's actually motion within this body, so it's a little bit different than some of the directional control valves that you may see, okay? Now, the next part after we draw the valve body, which represents, uh, which, is, which is important because the valve body itself, when you look at it, it gives, you have to understand how big are the input and output, uh, okay? What type of uh, threads do they have? How is it gonna be installed? Um, how many gallons per minute it will take? All of these things are going to help to be determined by the valve body themselves, by the, by the valve body. The next thing are the ports. Now, depending on the manufacturer, there can be a couple of different ways these are identified. Sometimes your input is referred to as one, okay? Your output is referred to as two, and again, these, this isn't set in stone. They can have different names. Sometimes they may even be labeled with letters, okay? So just make sure you understand that you'll have to go out and search and figure out what these values are, okay? So these are the ports that are available. Now, not all, but many pressure relief valves have two number ones, meaning that there's actually a T built in to the schematic, to the valve itself. So they'll have three ports, a number two port, which we'll talk about here in a second, and then two number ones. And if that's the case, this has a built-in T. So when oil comes typically directly from the pump, it will come into one of the port ones and out the other port one. Doesn't always have to have this. Other times there is an external T that is located there. So you have to compare the schematic diagram to what is going on in the real world to know if the T is built into the relief valve or if it is external. Pump, usually, the pump will usually go to port one. Port two always goes to tank. All right, so in this case, the number two port or the output always goes directly to tank. And it's usually simplified by just drawing the tank symbol right here, okay? They, sometimes they will draw this all the way back to a tank symbol that is for all of them, but oftentimes they like to simplify the diagram and just put that tank symbol there, okay? Now, the next part of a pressure relief valve is that they are normally closed valves. A pressure relief valve is a normally closed valve, and the way that is represented in this schematic diagram is with an arrow that is not lined up with the input and the output. If this was a normally open valve, that valve, the poppet, would be in line with this, but this is normally closed. And the point of the poppet is this is the buffer between your hydraulic pressure and spring pressure. All right, so a pressure relief valve compares spring pressure and hydraulic pressure, and if hydraulic pressure is higher than the spring pressure, it will send oil back to tank. So now, let's go ahead, so this arrow here represents the poppet. Now, the spring, the biasing spring, is located on the top here. Okay, now the biasing spring, sometimes there will be an arrow through it, sometimes there won't be. If there is not an arrow through it, that means it is not adjustable. That means that you've purchased it 
to open at a very specific pressure. Let's just say 800 PSI, for example. So if pressure out here gets above 800, that will be enough pressure to overcome the spring. But mo a lot of pressure relief valves have the ability to be adjusted. And when that, when that is the case, there is an arrow that goes through the spring. Anytime there's an arrow going to or through something in a hydraulic system, that means it is variable. That means it can adjust through a specific range of pressures, okay? And now this spring pressure is being compared to hydraulic pressure. Now how the hydraulic pressure gets there is through an internal pilot line that is drawn like this. Now whether there's actually an internal pilot line doesn't really matter. Sometimes it's, it's just on a direct, it's just being sensed right by the poppet itself. This line indicates that the hydraulic pressure that is going to be located at one comes down through here and this poppet is going to be balanced out by the comparison of the spring and the hydraulic pressure. This is very important. If my spring pressure is set to 1000 PSI and I have 800 PSI here, well this will be closed or only cracked open depending on the specific pressure relief valve. But if this is at 1000 PSI, this poppet would move up and oil would be allowed to go back to tank. Okay? So, everything on the schematic diagram has a specific point, all right? There's nothing here that is drawn out of, for the sake of being drawn. Everything represents something. If it's the valve body, the poppet itself that indicates what is being compared, in this case, hydraulic pressure that comes directly from the input to spring pressure that can either be variable, meaning it can be adjusted, or non-adjustable where there's just a spring in there that has a certain amount of force that is required to, to compress it enough to allow oil from the system to go back to tank, okay? Most, if not all, hydraulic systems require a pressure relief valve to set the maximum resistance in the system. Without one, or if they go bad, you're either going to burn the pump out, the motor is going to pull more current than its protective devices such as a fuse or circuit breaker can handle, or worst case scenario, you could burst a hose that could cause damage to equipment, but more importantly, it could injure or kill somebody if that happens. So we all need to know how a pressure relief valve works and understanding the schematic diagram compared to the cutaway diagram is a great place to start. So I hope you uh, learned a little bit in this, and if you did, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.